welcome to NTN Nightly. I am Anisya Antoine. This edition's top stories. The Sufra Fire Station receives a shot in the arm with the procurement of an ambulance. Rehabilitation works for the conversion of the Victoria Hospital to a full-fledged respiratory hospital are progressing. And the National Youth Council's pledge for a child. The ability of the Sufra Fire Station to respond to emergencies has been greatly enhanced following the handing over of an ambulance procured by the government of St. Lucia. The Sufra Fire Service hosted an appreciation ceremony for the procurement of an ambulance by the government of St. Lucia. The fire service has been working with a fleet of ambulance commissioned since 2007. The newly acquired ambulance is fully equipped with EMS equipment of a modern-day ambulance. The Permanent Secretary in the Ministry of Home Affairs and National Security, Elizabeth Bailey, explained that this new procurement will increase the response capacity of the fire department, especially in the face of the COVID-19 pandemic. Now that we are responding to COVID-19, I'm sure the demand for emergency equipment and emergency response um, have, inc have increased. So I know that the fire service will put it into good use. And I am happy that Sufre, after waiting for a number of years, finally have the new ambulance. I know that they will take good care of it and it will help them in performing their duties more effectively. Minister for Home Affairs and National Security, Senator Honorable Herman Guild Francis, noted that despite the harsh financial times, the government recognized the importance of procuring this equipment. I think Sufre deserves those sorts of um, equipment because it has been developing at such a rapid pace that um, it has caused the Ministry of Home Affairs and National Security to buckle up. And so we have had to renovate this fire station, we have had to renovate the police station, um, and now we are giving you this um, fire ambulance. Now, we know for a fact that we have been hit a big blow by COVID, and you are the frontline um, personnel. And as the fire chief said, thank God that no fire officer has been afflicted with this sort of malady. I think this fire plant, this um, ambulance will assist you greatly. I just had a little peek in there and it is really state of the art. Um, so I want to make sure that you, you keep it uh, as in the pristine position and situation that it is in. Chief Fire Officer of the Sufre Fire Station, Joseph Joseph, expressed gratitude to the government of St. Lucia for the new ambulance. I also, I also wish to thank our officers, our fire officers, uh, in, particular, in particular those persons who um, constantly re respond to the EMS calls, um, those who have to put their lives on, on the line to deal directly with you know, positive cases because uh, I think for all of the positive cases we've um, registered here, our fire officers have in one way or another um, interacted with them. And thankfully there's not been any um, you know, contamination. So um, we are thankful for that. And so um, let me thank our fire officers um, and every single one of them, not just our EMTs and, and, and EMS persons, but every single fire officer for the good effort that you make in the job on the trying times. The appreciation ceremony for the procurement of a new ambulance by the government of St. Lucia took place on Thursday, August 20th at the Sufra Fire Station. Rehabilitation works for the conversion of the Victoria Hospital to a full-fledged respiratory hospital are progressing. The Ministry of Health is working towards completion by the end of September 2020. The respiratory hospital will have a bed capacity of 100. More from Lisa Joseph. Since the transitioning of the Victoria Hospital, VH, to the Owen King EU Hospital on March 27, 2020, work has been ongoing in transforming the facility into a respiratory medical center. Converting VH has come at a significant cost that was unforeseen, much like the novel coronavirus. 
Nevertheless, Health Minister Senator Honorable Mary Isaac says government is committed to completing the respiratory hospital as it plays a major role in the island's efforts at combating COVID-19. You know, we did not have a budget for that, so we had to find the funds um, within, you know, the, the, within the budget of the Ministry of Health as well as funding from um, the Ministry of Finance. And um, it, it is coming along really, really very beautifully. The inside is almost done, you know, almost complete. Meticulous details have gone into the rehabilitation works with safety at the forefront. The executive director of the OKEUVH, Nancy Francis, explains the scope of works. So we have on ground our hospital engineer who's working very closely with Skelly Construction as well as the oversight committee from the World Bank. So on a daily basis, the, our project engineer will be in contact with construction so they can look at the logistics for the day and from a management perspective every single day we have a manager on ground at the respiratory hospital to ensure that things are done where things are coordinated in the right way and we have and we are able to respond to any emergencies that may that may arise with the onset of COVID-19 plans by the Ministry of Health to utilize the Victoria Hospital as a polyclinic following the opening of the OKEU have been on pause. Well, it was supposed to be um, a polyclinic um, to replace the Chaussee Road Health Center. But for now, we can only go as far as saying that it is going to be a respiratory hospital. And because of all the monies, all the funding that is going into transferring it into that, that, that facility. I am not sure um, what we are going to do from there. Hopefully, it probably will be in a better position, in a better place, in a better situation for us to move, change it into a, a polyclinic. But for now, I am not sure. I cannot say. We do not have, we have not looked at that past um, COVID. Minister Isaac estimates that the respiratory hospital will be fully functional by the end of September. Five respiratory clinics have also been set up at the Grosley Polyclinic, the Clary Wellness Center, the Denry Hospital, the VA4 Wellness Center, and the Sufre Hospital. The services at Denry and Sufre Hospitals and the Leclerc and VA4 Wellness Centers are available daily, Monday to Friday, from 8 a.m. to 4 p.m., Grocery Polyclinic is available daily from 8 a.m. to 4 p.m., including weekends. The St. Jude Hospital can also be accessed by persons with flu-like symptoms. From the Government Information Service, Lisa Joseph reporting. Meantime, St. Lucia is earmarked to benefit from a major donation of PPEs through an international collaboration. Tusankin English Francis of CARICOM News Time reports. The Caribbean community's response to COVID-19 got a major boost recently with a significant donation of medical supplies from the World Health Organization, the Jack Ma Foundation, Canada, and the United Arab Emirates. The supplies include personal protection equipment, surgical masks, and PCR test kits. All CARICOM countries are benefiting from the donations that will reach their countries through the regional logistics hub operated by the Caribbean Disaster Emergency Management Agency. The World Food Program is assisting SIDEMA deliver supplies to six CARICOM countries. Prime Minister Mia Amor Motley was instrumental in advocating for the assistance during her tenure as chair of CARICOM. In other COVID-related developments from the region, the government of St. Kitts and Nevis says it is hoping to open its borders in October 2020 should the country continue to see low COVID-19 numbers. Here is Michelle Nurse of CARICOM News Time. Prime Minister Timothy Harris says the Ministry of Tourism will begin an expansive training program for persons in the tourism industry to acquire a St. Kitts and Nevis travel approved seal. The seal will symbolize that those individuals are authorized to operate within the new environment as the government takes steps to revitalize the economy to pre-COVID-19 levels. CARICOM associate members, Anguilla and the Cayman Islands, 
are also delaying the opening of their borders to October 2020. Even though Anguilla has been COVID-19 free for the past 100 days, newly elected Premier Dr. Ellis Webster said the government feels that the risk of allowing persons into the country from COVID-19 hotspots is greater than Anguilla's healthcare system can take. The Cayman Islands government says the air bridge between the United Kingdom and the Cayman Islands will remain open as this provides a vitally important link between the two countries. Considering the dire consequences of the pandemic on household incomes, the National Youth Council, NYC, is playing its part by organizing a virtual telephone to provide educational assistance for at-risk students. This drive, dubbed Pledge for a Child, will be aired on the National Television Network from the GIS Studios on Sunday, August 23, 2020, from 2 p.m. to 6 p.m. The National Youth Council decided upon this fundraiser after consultations with the various district youth and sports councils. We're really looking to provide educational assistance to students, primarily those at the secondary school level. And we would want to focus on about 20 South Alpha Lewis students to provide them with scholarships uh, for facilities fees and, and whatnot. So the educational assistance drive, it really came about because of COVID. Uh, we identified the, the impacts, the socioeconomic impacts of COVID-19 um, on students, primarily on the educational sector. Mm -hmm. And we think that a telephone is needed to provide assistance to those students who will not be able to meet that, that threshold, that group that is usually catered for. The public is encouraged to tune in to NTN on Sunday afternoon and make a donation toward the effort. It, it will be virtual primarily. Uh, we would have hosts in house, uh, but we would have individuals who would have sent or would be sending videos to of, of various artists. And we'll have young persons uh, performing, not just singing, we'll have dances and whatnot. You pledge via our bank account, which is at the Bank of St. Lucia, and the number for the bank account is 1011500. Three five five. For more information on this weekend's telethon, visit any one of the NYC social media handles. This is NTN Nightly. Up next, Primus Hutchinson with the NTN Novello Quayol. Ministry, Ministry of, of Equity, Equity Social, Social Justice, Justice Local, Local Government, Government and, and Empowerment, Empowerment wishes to notify all clients of the Public Assistance Program from Castries, Babuno, Grosile, and Susimilet regions that payment for the month of July has commenced. On Thursday, August 20th to Friday, August 21st, 2020, payments will be made at the various locations from 9 a.m. daily. For further information, please contact the Ministry at telephone number 468-5108, Castries, or 454-6478, Welcome back. We now join Primus Hutchinson for the NTN Novella Quayol. Monsieur Ta, Anissia, Monsieur Madame Department, Kine Responsabilité pour Information, en gouvernement cette ci ça c'est GIS et Télévision Nationale pour la NTN, Capoceto Nouvelle à Quayol, Présente Primus Hutchinson. Chef officier d'éducation à cette ci Dr. Fiona Mayer, déclaré que l'agent a plusieurs consultations en préparation pour virer ouvert l'école. Selon Dr. Mayer, ministre de l'éducation, j'ai une discussion. Et puis les officiers, un ministère de santé, particulièrement chef officier médical, chef officier d'éducation, a expliqué que ils savent les parents concernés des situations et conditions de l'école pour virer ou suivre les étudiants. Dr. Mayer, j'ai bail assurance là qui mais qu'à bail assurance là, il y a en considération toute nécessité pour faire assurer que l'école vit au vert et qu'il en condition pour recevoir tout étudiant en façon de protection contre maladie corona. Il y a déjà dit nous, c'est maman elle a savillé l'école en septembre, nous avons gardé en septembre, 7 septembre pour maman vie et avec nous avons gardé en bout à ou pour teacher vie à l'école là. Mais nous avons continué de dire tout le monde, nous 
pas qu'il voulait faire rien qui a affecté ma main nous en manière qui pas bon. Chef officier de Cassio a annoncé aussi comme il est nécessaire pour continuer ni communication et puis les parents ministère qui tient yon grand discussion à son entier lundi le 24 à août. Nous qui parlons avec Paul, la qui a une chance pour yo, m'a des questions yo veni. Si ça un bagay yo pas comprend, nous qui ça assise là pour nous essayer pour expliquer ba yo comment est nous voulons garder manière nous ça essayer pour porter ma main nous envier. Nous qui aussi dit yo rien pas qui fait nous pas qui veut me faire rien sans nous ni si pour ministre santé. Avec tout ça nous fait c'est pour travailler ensemble et yo pour garder plus même manière pour supporter ce moment nous parce que nous apprécié ce moment là j'ai l'école j'ai pas l'école en chaque temps en chaque ni on ni pour venir yo ni pour comprendre quoi yo connait dans l'école yo ni pour garder manière yo tu ca fait bagaille avant avec nous ni pour continuer à travailler avec yo discussion à son entien qui a commencé à midi après-midi lundi le 24 au 2020 Les pompiers, la division, les pompiers en souffrir, n'y ont grand la contentement, comme à présent, il y a une ambulance neuf qui a facilité l'opération de trois primaires. Du voyant, tu sais, mon j'ai dit, les 20 à août, les officiers en ministère des Affaires de Sécurité Nationale étaient présents en souffrir pour te participer dans la présentation. Le ministre de la responsabilité pour la Sécurité Nationale, on est sénateur Herman Gold Francis, déclare que le gouvernement sait si ça a longtemps les pompiers en souffrir de casse pour service neuf ça là et il est très plein pour que le gouvernement à la fin fait présentation ça là qui a assisté les pompiers et qui a souffert autant. Officier et officier les pompiers qui est responsable pour l'opération et ménagement des pompiers en division en souffrir, ça c'est David Nelson, dit nouvelle à Coyol, manière ambulance neuf ça là qui a bénéficié. Donc, on a monté chez moi en chasse, et bien, on a sorti jalousie. Pour ça même, si on est en fort, il faut. Il y a ça monté. Si on est en fort, il faut. Là, on est en fort, on est en fort, on est en distance. Et on est en marche, on est en fort, on est en fort. Là, on est en fort, on est en fort, on est en fort, on est en fort, on est en fort. Si on est en fort, 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 on est en fort. Parmi les officiers qui ont adressé ce cérémonie, c'était le secrétaire permanent, le ministère de la Sécurité nationale, Mme Elizabeth Bailey, et le chef officier des pompiers, M. Joseph Joseph. Le ministère de la Santé recevait récemment une grande quantité d'équipements de protection contre la maladie corona. Il aussi recevait un commerce de médicaments. Et tout ça a sorti de la Coca-Cola Foundation et uh, fait par l'organisation Croix-Rouge à cette ci Président Croix-Rouge à cette ci Gilbert Pierre dit que l'organisation est nécessaire pour faire une présentation ça là, pour assister cette ci à la situation de maladie corona. Pierre dit qu'il était très prêt pour te présenter le ministère de la Santé 3 gallons sanitizer, 200 gallons bleach, 1 000 masques, 15 000 gags pour continuer la bataille contre la corona. Officier médical de santé, Dr. Glensford Joseph, remercie l'organisation Croix-Rouge et dit que ce qui pense à la caille aide le ministère autant et ajoute que ce équipement qui est protégé, ce travail est santé à plusieurs façons. Et remarque que aussi, c'est l'assistance à la qui fait possible pour ce travail santé au point de l'environnement qui s'en est sauvé et propre et à côté de ça au point et pour tuer le service plus effectivement pour abattre. Covid-19 a fait cette ici. Et c'est comme ça nous retrouvons pour cette nouvelle-là. Je vous remercie pour votre pour regarder. Je vous remercie pour l'invitation. Je ne peux pas me considérer comme ça fait la ville et pour cette nouvelle à Coyol. Je vous souhaite tout le monde un bon finissement de semaine et comme toujours tout, pour une bonne proportion contre la fièvre dengue. Ça c'est là. Je vous remercie pour cette nouvelle. Merci à Peel Primus. That brings us to the end of NTN Nightly. Join us next time at 7 p.m. with a repeat at 7 a.m. You can also catch up with us anytime on the St. Lucia Government Facebook page or YouTube channel. I am Anisia Antoine.